You mentioned uh, at Zendesk, of course, you got promoted every eight to 12 months. And that's just staggering to be able to do that, not once, not twice, not thrice, but multiple times over in a period of what, almost six, seven years that you were there, right? Six and a half, yeah. Unpack the secret for us. H how did you do that beyond maybe working 60, 70 hours a week? Or maybe you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um... So yeah, no, I, I definitely did work uh, 60 to 70 hours a week. So that's part of it. Um, you know, one of the, the biggest secrets I always tell people about my career trajectory is, uh, well, if you work twice as hard, you'll get promoted twice as fast, <laughs> you know? So um, there, there's definitely an element to that. We, we add a few other things. Um, so one is you have to have, you know, you almost think of it, if you, you take like the founder kind of mindsets or a business owner mindset, you need your competitive advantage because ultimately being promoted and taking on new roles, whether it is, you know, taking a role someone left, taking a role that's being created for you, you're still competing. You know, there's always someone else. Every, you know, the manager mindset is, can I hire someone better uh, externally at this level? You know, if Alex is a manager and he wants to get promoted to senior manager, you know, could I hire a better senior manager than Alex? If the answer is no, then they should promote you. And you can tell them that, you know, like that, that's a, a narrative that you can use around why you should be promoted and the right kind of pragmatic finance people will, uh, you know, support you with that narrative if they really believe it. So you got to be the, the best uh, advocator for yourself. Uh, that means, you know, asking for a promotion. It means making sure people are aware when you've done something that, you know, warrants recognition. Um, but frankly, I would say that, you know, while I have gotten good at managing perceptions, I do not think that I manage perceptions uh, above average, you know, more, more than most people. I think that's table stakes. It's something you have to have to be successful in getting promoted and in appearing, you know, successful enough to be promoted. Uh, but it is uh, not something that, you know, I overly relied on, I believe. Most managers will gauge your performance based on what your business partners say about you. That's I mean, for me, and I think for many other leaders in the space, that's the number one thing they look at for their team members who are business partners is, does your business partner think you should be promoted? You know, are they going to be really upset if you, if you left because you didn't get promoted and could they hire someone better, you know, in your position, uh, at the level that you're trying to get promoted to. But a big part of what allowed me to be successful was caring about learning her business area as well or better than she knew her business area. Like that, that's the, I think, simplest and most comprehensive way to summarize getting to be that level of partner for that type of executive. Um, you have to be able to be in a conversation with her and say, you know your business you know, better than I do, but I know it very well. And I know parts of it even better than you do. And I know finance very well. And I know how to use that financial knowledge to advise you on how to run your business in a way that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to figure out. Like that is ultimately the value proposition of a strategic finance business partner for a leader. Uh, and so again, just you know, taking an example of how that actually plays out, uh, most of it was around headcount planning. Uh, so I ultimately became known for her as well as tons of other leaders that I partnered with as uh, the person that you go to to understand like how many support reps do I need? It's actually not simple, you know? You can think like, but to do it really well, you actually need to think about ramp times, you need to think about seasonality of tickets, you need to think about ticket types, there's different channels, you need to think about specializations, seniority, you have to think about location. If you're gonna do this in the Philippines, is there a different productivity, but there's also a different cost. You gotta think about budget, budget targets. Like there's a whole ecosystem of things that come together to uh, help you identify what the right number of target hires is in any particular time period. I'll just add one other thing that I think was really important, which is uh, getting a variety of experiences. Because to that systems thinking uh, and you know, sort of mapping mindset points that I was trying to make earlier, if you work in a number of different roles and a number of different functions and have a number of different business partners, work at a number of different companies, you're getting exposure to a lot of different things that start to build your intuition. You know, if you just work on the same thing over and over again, I think there's a tendency to get really good at following those motions. And, you know, you can do that process in your sleep and there's advantages to that. 
but you don't have the intuition of, well, there's this other thing I've seen done elsewhere, which actually could be better. Or the way this function operates, you know, it might be negatively impacted by the things that we're doing here. And so we should actually, you know, do it slightly differently to build better cohesion with that team. And then you can build a relationship in that case or whatever that actually, you know, ends up improving everybody's uh, success, you know, parent success and actual success. Um, so there's just countless examples of how having that variety of experience can be valuable.